Mary Claire. Hi, Mary nice Claire. to meet you. Hello there. This is Annie. Hi. Annie. Freshman in high school. How are you? Fine, how are you? This is Charles. Charles. Hi. Nice to see you. My oldest, Catherine. Hi. Hello there. That's Illinois. My wife, nice Anne. Hello there. Nice to see, nice to see you. Well, why don't we get a family picture in front of the desk? Right? We'd love that. Yes. Some can stand in front, I yeah, know that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. you can't step. I know it's pretty One of the finest was uh, taking you both to Dublin and to Windsor Castle. <laughs> With her, her, her Majesty was a little upset. You know, she just thought you and Mrs. Reagan were coming for the weekend when we took over the castle. <laughs> I had to, one of the funny things is I had to explain to her that when you leave the country, you still have the powers of the presidency. And when she leaves England, a council takes over for her. She does not have her powers. Hmm. And she did not understand that when you came, you were still president, and we had to have what you have back here. And I had to explain that to Sir Peter well, Ashbourne and Sir John Johnson. But again, thank you very much. And then you've got other things well, to do. Thanks, Listen, you know, Ambassador nice Price is calling from London for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I have a little statement here as Nancy and I depart from California or for California to spend the holiday season with family and friends. I want to express our sorrow and our concern for the families and friends of those who died in the crash of the Pan American Flight 103. There are many difficult aspects to this tragedy, but none so compelling as the anguish of those families who will not have their loved ones with them this Christmas season. Christmas is a special time for the young, for those who carry the twin promises of hopes and dreams. And on this flight were the hopes and dreams of many young people, including the tragic loss of so many students from Syracuse University. A tragedy that steals the hopes and dreams from our society magnifies the loss to our society. I know that America and the world mourn the loss of these wonderful people. And I ask that all of our citizens say a special prayer this Christmas for those who have felt the pain of those losses. May God be with them. Well, none of this, none of this, Helen, is, is established. We're, the search still goes on. We have no knowledge of how this accident happened. We're trying to find out. Do you feel that the, that you feel that the American citizens should have been warned about a possible incident as American diplomats were? I think all the precautions that could be taken were taken with regard to warning the airline and all, but if you stop to think about it, such a public statement with nothing more to go on than an anonymous telephone call, you'd literally have closed down the air traffic in the world. Mr. Reagan's suggestion, though, is that um, you care more about the diplomats who you did warn than the American public. No, that, 
As I say, I think that would have been a virtually impossible thing to do on the basis of that telephone call. And then when, if ever, would there be a revival on all airlines? No, we do not know that just yet. I've got to go. Is that the apology of the Iranians? Not the apology, but the statement from the Iranians that they regret what happened, that they had nothing to do with it? One's not to accept the Iranian statement that they had nothing to do with it. I think we're going to find out, try to find out by substantial evidence who had anything to do with it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. They got us back on the radio. Man. You know, they can, I mean, you know,